Okay, so we are starting unit four today. It is our last unit of the semester. I know it's been kind of a lot. Five units in one semester is a lot. Um, next semester, you only have three units. So especially next semester, you need to make sure that you are doing well on the test, like the first time around. Um, right now, I mean, you saw with the last unit test, you know that one bad test score can bring you down about a letter grade. Next semester, it might be more than that, honestly, because when you have more assessments, you can kind of survive with one of them being bad. When you only have three unit tests, because I'm preparing for next semester, only three unit tests, it'll affect your grade tremendously if you bad on one of those three. So more than any time, I know like the transition to high school is hard. Like now you're taking time tests. Now you are um, having to do well on them. Like you're not just getting gone to the next grade just because you need to make sure that you are doing better that first time around. Uh, most of the unit three tests have been updated. It's those paper ones that take longer but you know that that's your updated score when it says retake given during class time higher than two points given. And some people have asked, you know, I did pretty well on one of the tests. Like, do I really have to retake it? For me, the cutoff is an A. Because when you have your transcript and your final grade gets printed, it's really only the letter. It doesn't say that it's a 99, doesn't say that it's an 89.9, which does run up to an A. Um, like it doesn't say that, just as the letter. So the way that I see it, like you can't do better than an A. So that's why if you get an A on one of the parts of the test, I don't make you retake that part. Um, but if it's like a 44 out of 50, right? That's really close to an A, but it's not quite. I'm still going to hand it to you. I'm still going to give you the opportunity to do better on it. Um, but I mean, if it were me, I'd probably spend more time on the other 14 I didn't ace. And that's very fair. But don't say that I didn't give you the opportunity. Don't say that like at the end of the semester when it's close. Like, hey, can you just love me? Because really, like, retaking in class is unusual. You have those opportunities. You go over the test constantly. Um, the practice test, the first attempt, like you can see it multiple times and then you take. So like really I shouldn't have to pull up any grades at all. But keep that in mind, our last unit, let's make it a good one. It's about functions and this is more like a pre-lesson. So you might see that it's like a little bit out of order once we start actually going through lesson one, two, three, four and all that. Um, but this curriculum expects you to know a lot of things from middle school still. So that's why we're kind of using this as our first lesson. Um, and it's about functions. So what are functions? I had you write down this definition. We might make it simpler in a second. But a function is a relation in which each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. Some of those words mean either with pressure or When we talk about relations, really that's just a set of coordinates. So it could be listed like how you see on your paper. All of these are relations. Um, it could be in table form, it could be in map form, it could be in graph form. But these are all relations because they're all different ways of showing you coordinates. Only some of the relations are functions. And they are functions if basically each x has only one y. That's a really like much simpler way of saying this definition. Each x has only one y. All right, because when they say the word domain, that's referring to all the x values. When they say range, that's referring to all the y values. So when we say each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of y, we're saying that 
each X has just one Y. So if you see a list of coordinates and none of the X's repeat, automatically it's a function. I don't even need to look at the Y's. So like this random example right here is a function because the X's don't repeat. If I were to add a coordinate, and that's because honestly the question whether or not it's a function is pretty easy. On your test, it, what it's actually going to say is what coordinate needs to be removed to make this a function. What coordinate, if I add it, makes it not a function. All right, so if I add something to this list, like another five negative two coordinate. The X is repeating, but we have the same Y still. Okay, so still technically that would be a function because it's the same X with the same Y. If I were to change that Y value to something different, like eight or really just any other number other than negative two, now it's not a function because now I have the same X with two different Y's. And the reason why it's not a function anymore, and you'll see like later on, it might not be apparent like what the equation is that we use to make it, but things that are functions have like an equation. If you are plugging in the same number into the same equation, you're not going to get two different answers unless you did something. Okay, so that's like where it comes from. Other analogies I've heard, which I'm more like a math person, like to me, like you can't plug in the same number into an equation and get two different answers. Like to me, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but I've also heard people say like, you're not going to press the same button on the vending machine for like a particular item and get something different. Okay, so it has to be like each input has just one output. Questions on that? Okay, so, and this kind of summarizes what we just talked about. If you can see the ordered pairs, check, do the X's repeat? If they do, then it's not a function. And then when it's a graph, you could do Another method calls a vertical line test, which is easier to explain once we get to that part. So if you have a graph, you could use a vertical line test. Um, questions on the vocabulary so far? All right, briefly, uh, let me just tell you the goal today, and that's to look at some fun functions and try to describe them by identifying domain and range, and of course, whether or not they're a function. I'm recording right now, so make sure that even though I, I mean, I typically always record in this class, but just because I might not record in your class period doesn't mean that it's not there. I record every day, so there's no excuse. The practice will be on paper. I haven't had you grab it yet because I don't want you working on it while I'm talking. I want you to engage in the lesson and practice it the right way before you have your independent practice. I will check it tomorrow right at the start of class. So you might have some time today. It's only evens or odd, so it's nothing like really wrong. But uh, whatever you don't get done, try to have it done by the time you walk in tomorrow. So that way I can just put that score in and you won't have to upload it. But if you don't get full points when I check it, upload it and then wait seven days before you tell me to grade your stuff. I don't rush at all. Like I always grade within seven days without telling you. If your binder check is past due or you didn't get full points on it, that I will let you show me in person. So I would need to see all the pages. I don't remember what each in the per individual person was missing. So show me all the pages again, if you want that grade updated. Or just do the IXL sales. Those are also worth project points. So submit those screenshots and that could replace some of your bad binder checks. And these are the assessments for the rest of the semester. I think I might have like one other quiz 
in here, but everything else, like these are the dates, including the final exams. So only one more unit test. I always tell you at the start of the unit when the test will be and when the retake will be. So if you are ever absent on the day we take the test, be ready to take it the day you return. If you're absent for the corrections day, make sure that you're really using the study guides because if you're come back and it's retake day, you are retaking. I don't have other time to like use you. I can't recreate the corrections day if you're not here. So you need to be using those study guides that are just like the tests. Any questions on anything again? So now we're going to put this into action, I guess. There will be lots of opportunities for everyone to talk today. So I'll show you a few, and then we'll give you some to try, and then we'll assign reporters to share out. Um, but for each of these, we're going to say whether or not they're functions. And then we're also adding in these instructions whether, um, sorry, what the domain and range are. So we have a list of coordinates. Using our definition of what a function is, where each x has just one y, think about whether or not number one is a function. Okay, let's think about it. Does each x in number one have only one y? Okay. Don't say I didn't give you the opportunity your name on it so I can keep it for record. All right, so is number one a function? Okay, table nine, tell me why. None of the X's repeat, so good. Hopefully you guys recognize these as coordinates. I mean, we just spent a lot of the last few units talking about coordinates. And they are always in the order X and then Y. So looking at every single X, if you notice that none of them repeat, then it's automatically a function. I don't even need to look at the Y. We don't care if the Y is repeat. So it is a function. Good. Now we're going to identify the domain and range. So the domain is all the what in a function? All the x's. And if you didn't get that from earlier, then write this down to remember. Dr. X, Y. Domain is all the x's, range is all the y. Why they use like random words like that, I don't know. But on every test we move forward, it will ask what's the domain and range. The domain is all the x's, range is all the y's. So in this one, here's how I would list my domain. Using these fancy braces, I would put five, three, two, zero, and negative one. Then close it with another fancy brace. What this, what these little braces basically tell you is that my domain are these numbers and nothing else. Not the decimals in between, just those numbers. Five, three, two, zero, or negative one. Some teachers will say that you have to put them in order from least to greatest. So if they tell you that, then make sure they are. Personally, I don't think that matters. Domain is just a list of what all your x's could be. So just follow the directions, whatever it does say. So that's my domain. Questions on that? All right, now my range, looking at the y's, are negative two, negative five, Another negative five, but I'm not going to write any repeats on my list. I'll only write them once. Um, another negative two, and then a negative three. And that's my right. We're saying that the range is either of these three numbers and nothing else. 
And then don't write repeats. Questions on that? You think you could try two, three, and four? Okay. And then I'll give you some time to try, then I'll assign some reporters and we go over it. It should be pretty fast. Okay, so table one is number two, a function. And why is it not? Okay, so check the X's. We notice that we have in the X position. I want to make sure that's very clear, like it's the first number in the parentheses. Um, we have a repeating two with a different Y value. One is a negative four, one's a positive four, and those are still different numbers. Okay, I shouldn't be able to plug a two into an equation and get two different answers. So not a function, but and then in table two domain is what? Okay, good. We don't write them if they do read piece. And for whether or not you write them from least to greatest, it just depends on the instruction. For me, I personally don't think that should be a rule. Okay, just be my X is either of those numbers, and that's it. Um, table three, what is my range for this one? Okay, great. Any questions? Anyone disagree at all? All right. So then table four, number three, is that one a function? No. And why is it not? Just any numbers or? Okay, good. So we do not care if the y's repeat. We only care if the x's repeat. As you are looking at them, you can see we have a negative three. And when you look at those Y values, they are different. So automatically there, not a function. Domain table five is what? Negative four. Okay, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, person, stop talking. Um, class, did you miss any? Did I did I miss any writing them down? Okay, good. Then table six, what is the range for this one? All right, and then class, did we miss any for that one? All right, range is all the X's, range is all the Y's. One thing I will be picky about though, is like if your domain and range are just lists of numbers, you do need those fancy braces to show like it's, this is it, nothing else. Um, table seven, is number four a function? And why? None of the X's repeat. Looking at them, they don't repeat. I don't even need to look at the Y's, at least to determine if it's a function. I don't need to look at the Y's. Table eight, what is my domain of number four? All right, good, all the X's. And table nine, what is my ring? Mm -hmm. All right, any questions, comments, concerns? All right, the rest of the front side, hopefully, like we don't need to do every single one, um, but these are the other ways that relations, lists of coordinates can be displayed. So X and Y tables, those will have repeats if there are any. 
Um, and then maps. So the maps do have some rules in creating them. If there are repeats, they don't list them. They'll just have additional arrows. And for the maps, I mean, I've never seen them put the Y on the left side or the X on the right. It's always generally been X to Y. But really, you can tell from the arrows. The arrows come from the, what else do we call Xs? That is true. But another word also. Input. So like it always comes from the input to the output, your Y. So even though they don't put X and Y, it always comes from the input to the output. Yeah. All right, but anyway, we're not gonna necessarily do every single one of these. Table one. So whoever spoke for your group more recently, go like one to the left. Yeah. All right, table one, putting you a little bit on the spot. Is number five a function, yes or no? And why not? What's our definition of a function? Okay, so each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the y. So in really simple terms, each x has just one y. So it's not a function because which x repeats class? And when we look at what it's paired with, two different y's. If it was the same exact coordinate, I would still say it's a function. But it's not. All right, so not a function. Um, table two, can you tell me the domain of this one really quick? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sorry, yeah, of number five. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And table three, can you tell me the range? Okay, great. Anyone lost? Any questions? It's a different way of displaying it. I think tables are the easiest. You will not want to put these in order necessarily, just however they're paired and coordinates, that is how they go on the table. We're going to skip the other tables if that's okay. All right, so now let's look at the maps. So again, like the maps are a little bit more picky in how they're represented. They will list the numbers from least to greatest and just show you with arrows how they are actually paired. So like one of the coordinates is two seven, another coordinate is four four. Um, table four, can you tell me if number nine is a function or not? It is a function. Because each arrow that comes from an X only goes to one Y. Good. Um, and then you'd still list the domain and range like how we did before. I might not list it for this one because um, it's hard to identify. Table five, can you tell me if number 10 is a function or not? Not a function because why? The negative one repeats, that's what makes it not a function. We don't care that, for example, the seven repeats because that's a Y. We don't care. But we do care that the X repeats and goes to two different Y values. And you could identify the domain and range, but I'm not going to bother because that one, I hope you understand, right? Yeah. Okay. 
on the back is where it gets a little more challenging, only because they don't list the numbers out for you. So these are our graphs. And at the top of this paper, it mentioned something about a vertical line test that you can use when it is a graph. So that says that if a vertical line intersects a graph more than once, then it's not a function. When we're looking at graphs like 12 through or 11 through 13, you honestly could identify every single coordinate and then tell me the domain and range, just like how we did in numbers one through four. Um, but you could also do the vertical line test. I'd say it's a little harder when it's just the dots versus like continuous lines. But if there is anywhere that you can draw a vertical line and it touches the points more than once on a vertical line, like here, that would make it not a function. It fails the vertical line test. It only needs to fail once for it to be not a function. That is me having the same x value of one with two different y values. Um, my domain, and again, it's up to you. You could identify every single coordinate and then identify your domain. I'm pretty good with coordinate planes, so I'm just going to look at it. So my x's for every single one of these would be negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, and 4. That's me saying the x of every single one of these dots. My range, so my y values, are negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. Right? Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. So they are still just normal ordered pairs. That's why my domain and range still looks like this, just a list of what they all can be. Not the decimals in the beginning, they're not connected. Questions on 11? Okay. Now, 14 through 16 is where it gets a little harder, but you'll get better at it. Like you'll see it in multiple times throughout this unit, and then you'll see it all the time for every single test after that. Um, but these are continuous graphs, because they're not just dots. Those domain and ranges might look a little bit different, but it's still like telling you what the X can be and telling you what the Y can be. Um, but first, let's see whether or not it's a function. For these, see, does it pass my vertical line test? Is there anywhere on this graph that it would touch a vertical line more than once? Yeah, multiple places, but on the lines I drew, for example, here and here, it only needs to fail once for it to not be a function. So 14 is not a function. Because it fails the vertical line test. So whatever X this is has multiple Y's. For my domain and range, it's not just going to be a list of numbers because I wish I could pull it up in Desmos and show you like whatever these X values are include all of the decimals in between. So we need to write something that shows X can be all of these numbers. So we're going to use an inequality if there is a limitation. So remind me, domain is all the what in a function? All the X's. The X axis goes from left to right. So scan from left to right. Does my graph go infinitely to the left? No. 
Well, the way that these arrows go, if I were to extend them, would they go just infinitely to the left? So, yes, that's going more left, right? So, yes, it's going infinitely to the left. Is it going infinitely to the right? Look at the screen, guys. I'm going to look zoned out. Is it going infinitely to the right? No, because both of these are going like leftward, not going infinitely to the right. What x value does it stop at? Like, what's this x value? Two. Two. So for every boundary, and the most you can have are two, right? Because left and right. Um, for each boundary, you're going to use an inequality symbol to say x can be all the numbers that are either greater or less than two. What do you guys think? Would the numbers on this line be greater or less than two for the x? Less than two. And it does also touch the two. So we're gonna put an equal two as well. That makes sense. I feel like some of you are not even making it. So, Either it's so easy or it's so hard to get more of it. All the x's on this line are smaller or equal to two. Question moment. All right, now for my range, all the y's in this. Your y axis goes up and down. So look, does it go infinitely up? Yes, does it go infinitely down? So it's at a diagonal, but it's still like as we keep going, it's going more down. So it does go infinitely up and down. When there's no boundary at all, either direction, we say that it is all real numbers for the range or for whatever it is that we're talking about. So it goes infinitely up and down. My range is all real numbers. Questions on that? If you ever have to show a boundary, make sure whatever letter you use goes with, like if it's domain, you use an X. If it's range, you use a Y. But you're telling me what all the X's and Y's can be. All right, so you are going to try 12, 13, 15, 16, you mean everything I just taught you. And then I'll give you the practice once we've gone over them. So do give them an attempt, talk to your group. I might change the recorder completely. It might be you again, depending on what I say. Everyone try it. We'll go over it in a few minutes. Because 12 and 13 are a bit easier. Like, I don't think I need to ask. I mean, I hope I don't have to, but if I do, like, maybe you should speak up and ask questions. Um, but 12 is a function. It would pass a vertical line as each x has only one line. And I listed my domain and range. What I would recommend is ask for it for you right now to just kind of look and see, okay, this x is negative 3, this x is negative 2, and so forth. Identify every single coordinate. Here is one negative three. Here is negative three, negative three. And then let's hear the other questions on both. Okay. Then 13 is not a function. Here is where it would fail the vertical line test. Because that x has two different y's. We have one that is three zero, and another that is three three. Okay, so two of the same x's with different y's. My domain is negative three, negative two, one, and three. My range is negative three, two, zero, two, three. 
question. So now the slightly more challenging ones. And again, it gets easier over time. Vertical line test tells you whether or not it's a function on a continuous line. So table four, is 15 a function? It is, it would pass the vertical line test. Good. Table five, can you tell me what the domain might be? Domain is all the what in a function? All the exits. So C, does it go infinitely to the left? Does it go infinitely to the right? So then table five looks like my leftmost X. That's the y for negative three for the leftmost x. Everyone see that? Don't lose focus on the ones, right? And then what's my rightmost y? Or sorry, my rightmost x. So here's how you show it if it has two boundaries. We're going to make a compound inequality. So for each boundary, use an inequality symbol. I'm going to use the letter X because we're talking about the domain. And think about what all these X's are in relation to the negative three. These X's would be bigger than the negative three. At the same time, they're all smaller than the one. And they do touch both. So therefore, I'm gonna put the little line in it. If you set it up to where it's always a smaller number and the to the left and the bigger number to the right, it, the signs typically always go the, these directions. And then it's just whether or not does it touch that number or not. These are closed circles, so yeah, they do. Questions on that. So really the way that this is different than saying like negative three comma negative two comma negative one and whatever. We're saying that it's between negative three and one and every single decimal in between. Questions on that? Okay. So then table six, what would be my range for 15? Does it go infinite? Because range is all the what class? All the y's. So table six, does it go infinitely upward? What y value is like my uppermost value? Okay, so I'm gonna put that over here because it would be the higher of the two. Um, and then class, what's my lowermost y value? One. One. I'm gonna put that here because it's smaller. And then generally the signs will open this way if you set it up this way. And then see, does it touch those numbers? Yes, it does. I'm gonna put the little line underneath. And we're saying that the Y values on this line are between one and four, right? Like over here, this coordinate, uh, let's see, let's just pick a random one. The X value is about one. The Y value is about like two and a half. Two and a half is between one and four. And that's not one, that's like a negative. Right. 
Negative one is between negative three and one. Good? Maybe, all right. Table seven, what's my domain of, or sorry, table seven, tell me if 16 is a function or not. So does 16 pass the vertical line test? So it is a function. Great. 16 is a function. There's nowhere that it would touch a vertical line more than once, so it is a function. Table eight, what is my domain for 16? Does it go, because domain is X, which goes from left to right, does it go infinitely left? Does it go infinitely right? I'm going to say yes for both because if we were to extend these, it is getting a little bit wider as we go. So it is adding more left and right in both directions. So class, what do we call it if there's no boundaries at all? My domain is all real numbers for this one. And some could argue that it goes like, or I guess that's more for the ring, but what I'm about to say, so I'll wait. Um, but as it goes up and down, it is getting a little wider, which adds left and right. So it will touch all the x. All right, now the range, table nine, do you have it? All right, class range refers to all the what in a function? All the y's. The table nine, does it go infinitely upward? Yes, does it go infinitely downward? What's my range? Is there no boundary at all in either direction? Okay, great. Questions, comments, concerns? You'll have more practice, don't worry. Um, also, here is your practice. You can knock out a two of one right now and pack up that and you mind. It's only even or odds. Try to have it done by the time you come in tomorrow so that way we don't have to worry about you uploading it and rushing me to grade it because I promise you I will not rush. I will grade it in the seven days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, there's a place for you to upload it if you want to. No. So make sure you each get one. I'm passing out, but if you don't receive enough, it's pretty easy. Yeah, that all right anyone not get one Thank you. 